Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jolene from sunshinediary.com and I am finally filming my 2020 planner set up. I'm going to be switching into this new planner that I've purchased and I'm going to be switching from my old one which I actually used for all of 2018 and 2019 so it was time for a change. This video is very long overdue. I have wanted to film this for a while. Um, I purchased the planner about two months ago I would say and I haven't used it at all. I've barely touched it since I purchased it because I knew that I wanted to film this video. So I'm just gonna get started. So let me show you the planner itself. Finally, I'm so excited to get to use this. This is what it comes like, basically, just in this box. I'm just gonna take it out. Ooh, it comes with some little stickers underneath. Well, I, I assume these are stickers. I haven't really looked at it very carefully. Um, yes, yeah, stickers, which I may or may not use. I'm not sure. I'll think about that a bit later. I'll be switching from my 2019, as I said, my, my 2019 planner to my 2020 planner. But I won't go into too much depth about the 2020 planner, the 2019 planner, sorry, because I think that'll make for a super long video. And I think this is already going to be fairly long as it is. So let me just open this up. This is what it looks like inside. Now, my previous planner, the one that I showed you from 2018 and 19, um, is also by Le Bon. I purchased this on Amazon, and I don't remember it coming with this kind of plastic cover. I don't know if they've done that, if this is a new thing that they do, or if they've done that because... Oops, this is falling out. Yeah, I don't know if they've done that this time because this is a white planner, but I'm just going to very carefully take it out of this bit of plastic. I don't know if any of you are perfectionists like me, but uh, I have been waiting to set this up, just waiting for my orders. I ordered like planner charms and stuff on Etsy just to make it beautiful and not all of them have arrived and I am fed up because I need my planner. Um, anyone who knows me knows I am a self-employed freelancer. So this is my baby. This is my personal assistant. I need this to function and waiting this long to use it. Uh, that was not easy. Anyway, so finally I get to open this up. So this fell out of inside of it. This, as you saw, I took it out. Um, a Le Bon, is it a felt tip pen? No, is it? A, it looks like a ballpoint pen. I doubt I will use this. Will I use this? I feel like I should, at the very least, try it and see how it writes before I give my verdict. But it's not a pretty pen, and I like to have a cute pen in my plan. Oh, that's so nice. That's not a ballpoint pen at all. That's like um, a gel pen of some sort. Okay, that's nice. I'll use it, but I just it just won't live in my planner because it's it's not the look that I'm going for. Um, so yeah, I'll just set that aside. It comes with this today marker slash ruler, and it comes with these inserts. I'm not sure how many of them I'm going to use. I still have the inserts that I got um, in this one that I've used for two years. Yeah, I still have the inserts from that one, and most of them I didn't use. The dividers I also didn't use, so I don't know. I don't know, but basically you get these um, five dividers some lined note paper, some checkbox, or oh, some checkered note paper. What do you call this? For some reason the name isn't coming to me, but you can see what it is. Um, this kind of dotted note paper, I hope you can see that clearly, and some blank paper. I'm just gonna take everything out because I don't think I'm going to start with any of this. Oop, there we go. I love the gold rings, and like I said, my old planner was also by Le Bon, and so it's definitely, you know, a tried and true planner and brand for me. It's not super expensive. I'll put a link in the description to the exact place where I got it on Amazon. Right, so it's got this pocket, this pocket, this zipper pocket, um, nope, that's not a pocket. <laughs> This is a pocket, and this is another pocket. In my previous planner, 
I had quite a few sections that I will no longer be using in 2020. Basically, after using this system for two straight years, I have clearly identified what worked and what did not work, and I am able to make better choices for 2020. So I'm going to start off with a dashboard. I'm going to add some sticky notes and whatnot here in a second, and then I'm going to insert my dividers I've made I made this dashboard and I made the dividers as well um, from some cardstock paper that I have so unfortunately I can't tell you where you could get the same ones wait actually hold a second I wonder if I can find the cardstock and tell you what that was okay so this was the cardstock Ooh, I don't know if it fits in frame but craft sensations design pad um, so that's what it is. If you want to make dividers like the ones I made, most of them came from sheets that I found in that design pad. On the back side, I just stuck some stickers to decorate it because I didn't really like, it's really pretty on one side, but not so nice on the other side. So I put stickers to make it more interesting. So anyway, so I've got my five dividers in there and I am just going to start now filling it with things, some things I'll be taking out of my old planner and some things will be fairly new because they're not things that need to be reused or that I would want to reuse. So I'm going to put the pen in, the pen that I intend to dress this planner with, um, which is really nice. It's also a gel pen and I got this on Wish. Let me just quickly put my sticky notes on here. I am not going to bore you by making you watch as I do it, or at least not in real time. So when I'm done with that, I'll come back to you and continue setting up this new planner for this year. All right, there we go. I'm not too particular about this. Um, yeah, I think that this should work fine. I don't think I'll need to add any more for all of 2000, ooh, 2020. I was about to say 2019. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I don't think I'll um, need to add any more. So this will do for me. The next thing that I want to include um, will be my daily pages. I think I'm going to flip and put them here, but I might move them around as I fill the planner with other things. I'm sorry, the my um, battery died. But anyway, I'm going to include my daily pages. I have uh, pre-decorated a few of them. This is really the heart and soul of my planner and the part that I use the most. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to leave them exactly where I'm going to put them right now, which is after the second divider. But we'll see. As I fill this, I might switch things around. Then I'm going to include my notes section, which is something that existed in my previous planner that I uh, am carrying forward into 2020. Come on, move. All right, there we go. Notes. I think it's super handy to have a place to just freehand notes at any point in time. Then I'm going to insert um, something that I call my code vault. This is something that has been in my planner for many years now, and I found it super useful. I mean, it's currently empty, but what it is, is a section of my planner, um, usually right near the very back, where I include, and I'm going to put them all in here, um, I include all of my different usernames and user IDs and registration numbers and password hints and things like that, because I don't know. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I feel like it's just impossible to properly keep track of those things. So, yeah, I tend to have a code vault and I will just be switching um, all of my existing data from my uh, old planner into the new one. So I'm just going to put this here and then I'm going to find the equivalent in my old planner, which is... <laughs> Don't judge, guys. This has been going strong for two years. So this is the old version. Ha ha ha. And I am just going to pull it out planner is stuffed but that happens when you're using a personal size there we go so that is the old code vault and I will just be taking the pages out oops <laughs> from the inside 
of it and putting them in here. Um, but of course, I cannot show you that because that's private. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I have added in all of my registration numbers and um, password hints and all of these things. I have also added into my notes section just some notes that previously existed in my old planner that I want to keep and be able to keep track of for next year. The next thing that I would like to include is something new. Um, I don't know how well it will work. I hope it will work well for me. I saw someone else do it, but I just can't remember uh, whose YouTube video that was. Otherwise, I'd recommend them. And so I really feel awful that I can't remember. But anyway, um, they had this sort of notebook that lived in the back of their planner that they used as an inbox is what they called it. Um, if it's your, if you happen to be watching this and this was your um, YouTube video, could you please comment in the description because I hate not being able to credit someone with their idea. But anyway, so they had this thing that they called an inbox and they kept it in the back of their planner and uh, it was where they would write random notes and ideas and just things that didn't necessarily have a place or they couldn't immediately put it in the right place. Um, and then they would sort their inbox, I imagine, back into their planner. I have decided that apart from my notes section, um, I want this uh, not so much to sort random ideas and whatnot before they go here, but because sometimes when I'm taking notes in my actual notes section of my planner, I find that people look very curious, especially if it's in like a professional setting or something. Um, they give me odd looks sometimes and I am just not interested in it. So I want a separate little notebook that I can use so that people don't get too curious or judgmental about the fact that I choose to have a very, very feminine planner that I use for all purposes. This is my everyday carry, or it will be. So I'm going to decorate this event. It's actually quite plain, but yeah, I just bought these three little um, exercise books, lined notepads or notebooks from Hema, and uh, I will make this pretty eventually. But that's just going to go there for now. The next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to put in my agenda pages. That's usually at the very front of my planner. And I've already, they've been living in my um, 2019 planner just because there's some things that you already need to start scheduling for the next year before the year arrives. So what I will do is I will put my um, year at a glance here because I just like to have it a bit separate from my agenda pages usually. I feel like I've done in, in the past I've put this page here as well but anyway um, I am also going to put all of this now into the appointments section. This is where I am going to put anything that is something that I don't have a choice about the time of, if it's like a doctor's appointment or something like that, if it's like I have a meeting for work, it will go here. And I actually am going to add a few more pages um, now that I'm finally getting to set this thing up. You guys have no idea how impatient I've been to do this. So these are just Filofax, um, week on one page. Ah, uh, here we go. You see, I knew I wasn't crazy. These would be the pages that would go before my appointment pages. Oh, that'll go there. I'll fill that out eventually. <laughs> I'm trying not to make the video too long, so that's why I'm kind of rushing through certain things. And I am not going to put the entire year in there. I think I'm going to put half of the year, so I'm going to go until the end of June. Because, as I said, I think I said earlier, um, personal size planners tend to get bulky really quickly. Um, which isn't too much of a problem when you're in a ring bound because you can take pages out and add pages later if you want to. But I prefer to start off not too, too bulky. Anyway, um, so um, just to give you a quick overview of what I did in this um, planner... I had my calendar and public holidays in the front right after my dashboard, as you saw. Then I had a section for to-do lists. 
I am eliminating to-do lists from this um, planner. Oh, sorry for the interruption. I just ran out of storage space. Um, but I was saying, although I love to-do lists, for some reason, they just don't work for me. Um, it's kind of strange. Like, I like, there's something I like about a pre-made list with little check boxes and, and all of that. And so many people use them. And, you know, to-do list inserts is what I'm referring to, of course, not just to-do lists in general. Um, but I find that if I have a section for my planner that only has to-do lists, and then I have my um, daily pages in a different place, I never check the to-do lists. So the way that I typically use my planner is that I do all of my planning on a Sunday. Saturday, for the most part, I'll do decoration and I'll prepare my um, daily pages for use. Um, as you can see, I typically um, decorate one side and then I leave another side blank. Let me see if I can show you a better example from um, last year's planner. So what I will do is that I would then put my schedule in on the other side. Sometimes it's blank because I don't have very much to do in a particular day or I have one item in my day that's going to take up so much of my time that there's no use scheduling. It's basically just shower, dress, leave the house and do that. Um, but uh, yeah, for, most, for the most part, I put all of my to-do items here and then I put my schedule here. And that works for me because I don't need this full page for items that I have on my to-do list. So you'll see that I put my things that I want to do and then I put a schedule section, which sometimes I fill out and sometimes I don't. I know it's weird. You've probably never seen anyone plan this way, but that's what I do. So that's what you see that I've done here. I will then go and fill out everything on my daily pages that I need to do in a given week. And to do that, basically... There's some things that I don't need to think about, but for anything else, when I'm planning my week ahead, and on, that's on a Saturday or on a Sunday, I will go to my uh, appointment section and I will check. Here I want to, well, I want it actually, to submit my VAT declaration and my client list. Um, that's something that you have to do when you're self-employed. Guys, if you want videos on being self-employed, being a freelancer, what that's like, what are the challenges, what are the things you need to know, maybe you're in a similar position, you want some information, how I organize my life and whatnot, that would be a video that I'd be very happy to make. Just leave me a comment and let me know. But anyway, yes, for instance, if I'm planning this week, then these would be the things that I write down um, when I'm going to fill out my daily pages. So I will consult my appointment section typically on a Sunday, a Saturday or Sunday. If the week is ongoing, let's say um, today is the 8th of January and I, I get a phone call for someone inviting me to a meeting on Friday. Sometimes I won't even bother to put in my appointment section. I will just write it on Friday. So literally, this is what I use this is what I consult every day. Everything else, I go there when I need it. Like if I need to write notes, then I'll go to my notes section and I'll write my notes. I don't check that on a routine basis, but I come here every day. So I find that to-do lists don't work for me. I'm sorry, I've gone on a tangent, but bear with me. Um, I find that to-do lists don't work for me because they sort of require you to regularly check in with them. But then I don't, I, f I completely forget that I have a to-do list section of my planner. Then at some point, after two months or something, I remember, I check, I see a whole bunch of things that I've forgotten that I wanted to do, and I get really stressed. So it's not useful, and it's also a source of stress, which my planner is supposed to be the exact opposite of. So I've had to bite the bullet, I can't plan like everyone else, I can't use those beautiful to-do list um, insert. So I've gotten rid of that. The other thing that I am changing for 2020 when it comes to the sections in my planner and my method of sort of personal organization and organization of my tasks is that I am not going to put goals. Usually right after this section, I would have goals. Um, but I'm not going to bother to do that. I never check my goal section. I write it at the beginning of the year, you know, all bright eyed and bushy tailed as you do. And then I would fail to ever look at it thereafter. Um, and uh, part of the reason is because your goals are translated into tasks. Um, but it, this is just my, my immunization, immunization card, by the way, which I keep in my planner because my planner goes everywhere with me. So it's a, a way to never forget it. I travel a lot. Anyway, so yes, there's a saying that a goal without a plan is a wish or something like that. 
if I can find the proper saying, I'll put it on the screen. But it goes, that's basically the gist of it. Um, so having goals is all well and good, but you then need to break them down into tasks that you need to accomplish in order to achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve. You need to have a measurable result. You need to have a method in place. You need to have tasks and routines designed to help you get to your goal. So knowing what your goal is, is only the first step. For instance, if I have a goal of, to make it really simple, let's say I have a goal of saving, I don't know, a thousand euros in a month, right? Let's imagine this was my goal section. I could put, I will save 1,000 euros this month. That's great. So all I ever need is to write the goal once or to identify what the goal is. But then what's more interesting to me is all of the steps that I need to take to accomplish it. In my goal section, I also used to list those steps. But once again, I never flip there. This is the heart and soul of my planner. This is where I come. This is where I live. So what do I do? I've decided to make a routine for myself that encompasses all of the different steps that I need to take to achieve my goals and craft that routine once, now at the beginning of the year, and I will put that routine here and I will include that in my daily planning. I think eventually I won't even need to consult it, just like I currently don't need to consult any routine to know that every Wednesday I take care of my plants and I empty the bins. Maybe it will be also every Wednesday I transfer 50 euros from my current account to my savings account because I'm trying to save a thousand. I don't know. It's something like that is what, it, what, what I mean. I will not include a goal section. It was just decorating my planner and taking up space. So that is another big change um, if you're interested. Um, if you have also been planning for a while and are making any significant changes to your planner system, your setup for 2020, let me know in the comments. I'm very, very interested. Um, I really want to sort of gather best practices from other people who plan to sort of help inform my process and rationalize my process even further. So anyway, where were we? I think I was saying that this is the section where I will usually have a lot of lists. It gets quite random. I would have uh, my different ideas and routines, and I had a section with inspirational quotes in the planner that I've been using for the past two years. I have notes on how to take care of my various plants. I have packing lists. Not all of those things will move with me into 2020. So let's just see who well, what gets to stay. My packing list is definitely something that will travel with me, will, will move to this new planner with me. Um, I've slowed down a bit, but I used to live this lifestyle where I was traveling three out of every four weeks. So uh, believe me, I have found every possible way to rationalize, make travel faster, easier, and less stressful. This is important. This is something I regularly use. So that's going to um, go with me. Um, then I have wish lists as well, which I am going to put right behind that, that packing list. Now, call me crazy, but I still actually have a contact list section, like like an address book kind of thing, which I know is super old school and I admittedly pretty much never use, but it's literally three pages. It's followed me for ages, and I just think it doesn't hurt to have somewhere in the planner that I can keep track of um, addresses or contact details that people might give to me. And it, of course, I've covered everything up because, you know, some of this is private. I think it's, it's useful and it doesn't take up much space. So why not? I found that I never check um, my inspirational quotes anymore. That's kind of sad. <laughs> um, but no, if you follow my Instagram, you'll see that I post a new inspirational quote probably um, two or three times a month, um, fairly regularly. So it's not that I am no longer a positive person. It's just that I find I don't need that in my planner. But my plant care pages, I know they look terrible. Guys, these things are, whew, 
Ooh, I have to say four years old. Four years, these pages have followed me. It's one of those things that I don't use it regularly, but I'm always happy to have it there to check when um, when I need to. Oh, I forgot this. These are ones that I actually that actually came with plants um, that have care instructions. So um, I know I'm so bad. I keep opening my rings like that instead of using this. <sighs> don't do what I do, guys. Treat your planners nicely. Um, so yeah, those. Are my plant care pages i know they're hideous Ugh, maybe i should redo them and make them nice but guys this is this is a real everyday carry planner that a real person uses for real things so let's just have a look and see what we have here now we've got the dashboard we've got the appointments we've got the daily pages we've got the notes we've got the um lists you know of all different types and that, oh my gosh, it feels so slim. This is never, I mean, I never, ever, ever have a planner this skinny. I mean, I've taken stuff out of last year's planner to put in here. And look at this. Look, it's still so fat as compared to this, which is so skinny. I like it. That gives me room to grow. Okay, now for the fun part. I'm finally going to get to decorate. Like I said, my beautiful charms that I tried to get from Etsy have not arrived. Um not buying with that seller again but i won't tell you who they are because you know maybe they're maybe they're usually quite good um so what i've done is i have made my own polymer clay um paper clips to sort of compensate for my lack of beautiful professionally made etsy charms so i am just going to put them where i know that i will need them the pages that i flip to really frequently I tend to like to put some sort of marker, charm, ruler, something, so that I can get there really quickly. This was from last year's planner. Where did I even get this? I think this was from a Webster's Pages planner, and it's just been following me. I mean, I've, I've been using it for years now, and why fix it if it is not broken? These I also made. I saw someone using these in her planner and she'd actually put them. It was so interesting to me. She'd put them at the bottom so they sort of dangled down and I thought that was super cute. For now I'm just going to put these on the rings because my planner is just so empty. I don't know. I just this has never been a problem that I've had before in life. <laughs> but whatever. I prefer this than having it too full in January, you know. Um, so that's that and this one I will put it somewhere else maybe this can go where my packing list is just so that I can more easily find the packing list really liking that oh now another thing that I won't really be keeping in my planner anymore are random stickers um, I find that they live in my planner I forget that they're there it's not really useful to have them there This is my national insurance card, which it's my UK national insurance card, which I don't know that I will need anytime soon as I now live in Belgium, but we'll see. Um, I'll put it there because that way I know exactly where it is. It's where it always is and where it has been for the past several years. The last thing that I'll do actually... Um, in preparation for using this, I think I am just going to... Ooh, no. No, Jolene. Relax. Um, I think I'm just going to put one of these magnetic bookmarks 
on this sort of notebook inbox thing that I have here um, just so that when I am actually using it once again I can directly flip to the page that is blank and ready to be used so that's going to be there for now so guys I can't believe I'm done um, but it's been long enough so there it is this is my planner set up for 2020 I'm so happy that I've finally been able to do it I hope you guys have found this interesting if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up that would really really make me feel special I'd really appreciate that and yeah like I said if you have any questions if you have any tips in terms of things that work or don't work for you please let me know in the comments I am super interested um, to know how other people plan because I've actually never met another planner person in real life so all of my input comes from YouTube so yeah Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Hope you guys like my 2020 planner. I have the feeling that this year is going to be amazing for me. And this will be a big part of that. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.